I just want to share with you a, a, short, a short story so about, because tonight we heard in the Lamentations, and I heard everyone singing beautifully the Lamentations, it's, uh, those the verses are the work of a poet who is, who is taking from all of creation to draw uh, imagery, to bring to mind the, the enormity, the uh, significance of the event that we're celebrating tonight. And so it's like a bouquet of flowers that he gives us. It's rich in symbolism, but I just want to pick out one of those flowers and, and look at it just for a minute because it has an interesting story for me. So it started actually in my last parish in Greece, in Port Daya. <clears throat> the church was built in 1801, and the iconostasis over time, uh, because they used, of course, for heat up on the mountain, they used a, a wood heater. They actually had a wood-burning stove in the middle of the church still when I got there. And of course, they had candles uh, from the people, and of course, they had oil lamps. So over time, all this creates a kind of black smoke that covered the iconostasis, and it really obscured most of the icons. You could hardly make them out. So even though it was a, a poor parish, uh, we got some people together to donate some money, and we hired someone uh, to a professional uh, art, art historian to clean the icons very carefully. And as she was cleaning, there was one icon. It was actually underneath the icon of Christ. And typically in these iconostasis, they'll be carved uh, with imagery on it or painted imagery, many, much imagery on it. So underneath the icon of Christ, there emerged this picture that I'd never seen before, even though I was there for two years. And it was this picture of a pelican. Okay, so it's a white pelican with a long beak, and there was a red spot on its chest. And it had around it three chicks, and it was in a nest. And I was very confused. What is the imagery here? Why is this so close to the icon of Christ? And then I recognized, after they cleaned it, there was a phrase written on it. And this was the phrase, Osper pelecan tetromenos timplevran su loge, sustanondas pedas exosas, epistaxas oiticus aftis cronus, which translated means, like the pelican, you gave life, O oh word, to your dying children. Wounded in your side, you let life blood flow, letting life-giving drops of blood fall on all. And I thought, this is very interesting. So I was, my interest was piqued, so I started researching this phrase. It turns out it's a phrase from the Lamentations. And that this is a common image uh, on iconostasis throughout uh, the Orthodox world. You may see it carved, this image of the pelican in a nest with chicks. And in fact, it, I was surprised to learn how common this image was in Christian art, in both East and West. And in fact, even Shakespeare and Hamlet reference to this story of the pelican that I'm going to tell you. And also Dante makes reference to the pelican. The same imagery, the same story that the artists in our Orthodox tradition were drawing on, and that the artist, the poet tonight, included in his Lamentations. So this goes back, the story of these animals, like the pelican, goes back to pre-Christian times, to the pre-Christian Greeks, and there were many myths about the animals. <clears throat> One, for example, and, and these were taken Christians. We have this actually from the second century. We have this book called the Physiologos, which a Christian writer has taken these ancient Greek myths and has adapted them to Christianity. And one of them, for example, is the phoenix. We all know this. The phoenix that burns itself up and then on the third day rises again. And of course, the Christians saw in this an image of Christ. Another interesting one is the unicorn. The myth was that the unicorn could only be captured in its, uh, by a pure virgin, and it could, would come into the pure virgin's lap. <clears throat> So, of course, the Christians saw this as an image of the incarnation of Christ in the, from the pure virgin, Mary. There's also this story, this myth of the pelican. And it has to do with the red spot on its chest. And apparently, most pelicans now don't have this, but there used to be a disease the pelicans had that would cause some of them to develop a red spot on their chest. And pelicans also have a kind of pouch. You know, so pelicans are mainly, they mainly eat fish, but sometimes they'll also eat 
amphibians, such as frogs and snakes. And even sometimes these frogs and snakes are venomous. Most of its diet is fish, though. So the myth goes something like this. This ancient, Christ, this ancient myth that came into Christianity, the pelican has a nest and has chicks. And these chicks are hungry. So the pelican goes out hunting to find food for the chicks. As the pelican is coming back, it noticed, or while the pelican was away, a snake slithered up to the nest. And of course, snakes eat, make their feasts on these chicks or eggs. The snake had slithered up to the nest of chicks and had bitten them, had bitten the three chicks, and had injected its poison into them. The chicks were dying. The, the mother pelican comes back, scares off the snake, but lands to find her chicks are dying of this poison. So what does the pelican do? The pelican takes its long beak and it pierces its own side. It pierces its own side with the beak. The blood flows from the pelican's side and that blood, because it eats sometimes venomous snakes and frogs, actually contains an antidote to the venom that was injected into its chicks. So the mother lets the blood flow and drip down onto her chicks who consume it. The chicks are healed by this antidote, but the mother pelican dies. The mother pelican sacrifices herself, pierces her own side in order to save her chicks from the venom of the snake. Does this sound familiar? So the Christian author here, he sees in this an image of Christ. And that's why we sang tonight. It's actually, there are other lamentations that, and actually for some reason, this is one of the ones that were cut out in the abbreviated version of lamentations we usually do. But normally we would sing that, this verse. And this is what we're commemorating. We're commemorating Christ like the pelican, it says, like the pelican, you gave life or word to your dying children. Us. Wounded in your side, you let life blood flow, letting life-giving drops of blood fall on all. So this is what the image of the pelican is supposed to invoke in us. This, this animal that will sacrifice itself for its chicks through its blood. And we see this in the image of Christ pierced in the side with a spear, his life giving blood flowing from the side, giving us holy communion and redemption of sins. And the sin that is infected that we've all been bitten with, of course, that's the venom of the snake, of the serpent, the venom of the evil one, infecting us, biting us, injecting us with sin. But Christ comes to shed his blood for us on the cross in order to heal us from this sickness. So glory be to Jesus Christ. Let us all say with all our soul and all our mind, let us say, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you and have mercy. Have mercy, and so God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for all devout and orthodox Christians. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for Archbishop Alexius. And we pray for our brother and the priests, higher monks, deacons, monks, and all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again let us pray.